Hello everyone. Today you are going to learn the concepts behind textures in sketching. We're going to look at what texture really means and how we can produce it and why it's so key to produce. By the end of today, you will have so much more confidence in encountering any texture and thinking, right, this is how I do it. I don't have to do every bit. Less is more. Simplification is king and I can do this and I will do this. And that is what I really think you'll get out of today. So without further ado, let's jump in and start sketching our textures. The first thing that we need to do is have a think about what texture is. So what is texture specifically in drawing, in painting? And I'm going to argue, if argue is the right word, that there are two different types of texture. So what are those two types? Well, the first is the sort of visual or tactile quality, that is how things look or how things feel of the surfaces, the materials or the objects in our drawing. To take an example, if we were to draw a leaf, we might draw the edge being a little bit ragged. We get a more firm stem at the end. That's telling us about the texture here. And then in the middle, you have all these veins which give it a with a slightly soft feel. To go to the other end of the spectrum, we might draw a brick, and here we get a sort of craggy feel to the outside of the brick, and a really firm, bold line, which is kind of also implying a little bit more than the texture. Within, you might get those little sort of air pockets just displaying the sort of roughness as well as the firmness that you get from this object. So here we have very contrasting textures, and these are the textures of the objects in our scene, or the surfaces in our scene. The other aspect of texture in art is the texture of our implements. So when I draw with my fine liner, I can get different textures depending on how I use it. If I swap to some uh, water-soluble pencils like these, or even just normal pencils, we get another texture. So if I try and recreate these same marks, I can't do it, but I do get a heap more texture. Similarly, if I then come in and add water, the texture again of this fundamentally changes, and that will change depending on how much water is on my brush. With our watercolours, you get different textures depending on the type of pigment. It might be smooth, or it might be heavily granulating, it might have loads of natural texture, which just creates this settling pattern all over the page. Equally, we can create textures by splashing, splashing water in there to create texture by using less water and almost dry brushing our way across the page. So there are textures which we're trying to represent but there are also textures which celebrate the natural qualities of whatever implement, whatever paint that we're using. So I think there's a couple of really important things to think about as you're going through this, this class. One is how much do I want to represent my scene and how much do I want to actually celebrate the materials? Or perhaps there's a happy middle ground somewhere in the middle of this. In the last lesson, we looked at two types of texture, and I suggested that somewhere in between that is perhaps a happy middle ground. And that's kind of what we're going to be focusing on through all the rest of these lessons. We'll be looking at how to get that texture, but enjoy the process and use our natural qualities of our materials to also enhance the texture and enhance the art. Now, the idea of texture it's tempting, it's often tempting to think that texture means, right, we have our block of wood here, and now we sort of start finding those little rings in it. We find these rings and things. But what's missing here is that we've just drawn a hard line on the outside and forgotten that texture isn't just internal, it's also external. So we failed here on the first step when we weren't thinking about our textures from the very beginning. So if we start again and we call this a stump of wood that we're trying to draw, of course we need to start thinking about that texture with the contour. So contour drawing is where we draw the outline of something. And if this is a stump we've cut through, of course that outline is going to have all these 
jagged edges. It's also going to have bark on. So look, this line is firmer than this line. It's got a bit of variation as well to show that it's not a uniform structure. And perhaps that is enough texture for the outside because often less is more. And we'll talk about that as we go through this course. Now I was doing that with a 0.3 millimeter fine liner. And as, as I said, that's giving me a nice bold line, but perhaps we then need to think about our tools and our, our sort of techniques and what our different equipment might bring to a texture. And a really simple example is swapping from a bold fine liner to a less bold fine liner when we're doing more intricate details. So now to do these internal little rings, well, look, that's now not going to draw too much attention from the outside, but we can still get the idea of these rings. Again, we can do variation, we can do little knots, because we all know that wood has knots. Maybe we do want to just delineate the outside of this bark a little bit more with a, a medium sort of boldness of line. And just by gently suggesting the texture, we can suddenly fill up this whole little wooden structure without drawing every little bit. So if idea number one is remembering your contour lines, the first lines you draw, the outside, then idea number two is suggestion. The idea that less is more. And what do we mean by this? Well, obviously when we are looking at textures or looking at surfaces, we could go into an incredible amount of detail. So a really obvious example is let's do a little brick wall. So we have our brick wall here and we come along and we find that lovely contour texture first. And then we find the contour texture at the bottom, which might actually be something different. It might not be related to the wall. It might be related to the grass in front of it. It might be related to a little bush in front of it. That is the contour texture of this whole wall. And now we're thinking about these internal textures, it might be tempting to go and draw every brick. And this isn't wrong. I'm going to say this isn't wrong. This is a perfectly valid way of applying texture. But there are several reasons why I prefer suggestion over this rather detailed approach, at least when I'm thinking about the whole of my sketch. And what are those reasons? Well, firstly, this took me a long time. So obviously I sped that up for you, but this took me a few minutes just to do this small part of a wall. And this wall isn't particularly interesting. So if I now want to pop in a, a tree behind perhaps, and perhaps actually the focal point of my whole scene is the church spire in the background, for example. Now, because there's so much ink going on here, what do you see? You only see this. This feels like a ghosted out background. Now that means to make this a real focal point, I'm gonna to have to do exactly the same thing. So I'm gonna to have to go and double down on all of that ink and it's going to take me a long time. Um, and for me, it's going to require a lot of focus and it's not going to be enjoyable. Also, now this whole sketch, this whole scene, as well as taking me a very long time, is going to come across as incredibly busy, more like an etching, something that you sort of see from the centuries past, which are amazing works of art, no doubt about that. But they're also detailed labours of love instead of loose, quick sketches. So there is certainly a good reason to do this kind of detailed work if you want. It has its own character. It's got a lovely quality of detail, but you have to be aware that there are drawbacks. And sometimes doing less, just suggesting, enables you to actually craft the scene which is a little bit more magical, which leaves the viewer to make up their own mind and is more enjoyable and a bit quicker. So my version of this might be to do that lovely contour drawing. We get the top of that wall in. We get the, the clear textures down below. Maybe we've got a little bush there as well. Then in our wall, we just do 
enough suggestions. Look, these bricks tell us that it's made of brick. And then I can always come back and add more. But now I can go, why well, actually this tree, perhaps that is more interesting. So I can add quickly just some textures to this, just really lovely loose textures, which mean that it has a sort of equal feel. And then when we get to the church, well here we can go a bit bolder and we can now apply a lot more textures to this perhaps. Perhaps now this is how we bring the eye to our focal point is by giving it more line work, more texture. And this is a very quick and loose example, obviously, but you can hopefully see the idea that just by balancing out the textures on what's important, what's not important, it allows you to move the viewer's eye around and move the viewer to finding the bit that you wanted them to find instead of perhaps being stuck just looking at a wall. And that is the sort of third part of what I think about with my textures is the focal point or the sort of point of interest and how are we building that up? How are we making that really obvious? And for me, that is through making our textures bolder, our textures more dense, our line work a little bolder, and therefore it becoming the point that your eye is drawn to. So if I just make a few more of these textures a bit bolder, a bit clearer, hopefully you'll agree that just by doing that, if I cover everything else on the page, look, the eye is drawn over here. If I do the, the same down here, well, the eye is drawn to the wall because we spent so much effort on it. And this is literally the practical skills we might want to think about as we are exploring our textures. And I'm just using the same piece of paper because I've still got bits of space around here and I don't want to throw away a, a bit of paper needlessly. So we can actually build this into a really interesting exploration of little textures and techniques. And pages like this in your sketchbook can become a work of art in, a, in their own right just through these explorations. So with our pen, a really key part of texture is hatching. So I've used hatching here and hatching might just be one of those textures which is showing you the mechanism of the sketch. It might be something which is showing you, you know, this was drawn with a fine liner. It might not be one of those representative parts of our texture. So this is a representative texture here, Try to draw all of these bricks in. But if I was to come and just do some shadow through hatching here, now this is also applying texture to my art. It's building up the focal points, so that's why I've used it here. This is applying texture, it's applying shadow, it's building up the focal point, but it's not actually representing a real texture. But hatching, simple hatching, is a very good way of applying a bit of texture, a bit of visual interest to your scene. You can do cross hatching like this. So look how we cross from side to side. And by doing so, we build up these denser and denser shadows, these denser and denser, denser um, textures. But we can also provide this same effect, the same increase in shadow through other things, through other types of hatching or dots. So for example, we do some pointillism. Now this is a another labor of love, but can be used in the right way, really lovely. And all we do is some simple dots. And the more dots we have, the darker that little area will appear. You can create entire sketches like this. You can build up entire works of very realistic art through a really intensive study of light and shadow, just using these dots. And you can imagine building it up in this manner. But we can also use them to just imply certain types of texture. For example, if we wanted to imply some little loose autumnal leaves, this is of course something that we'll come to later, but we've got the, the texture of our, our branches there, and then we just do some little textures of dots. And look at that, little dots, and that's all we need to do. And suddenly we've got the texture of this tree in a really simple representative fashion. And you can imagine using that for concrete, for gravel, for a beach. 
So you consider not just simple hatching, but also pointillism. Then the next thing, if we also stick with the natural world, is what I call naturalistic hatching. So that is where instead of building up with straight lines, we might build up with loopy lines. We might build up with shapes. We might go like a, this is a leaf shape, and then we build up the density of the leaves. So for example, in our tree here, we might draw some leaves, and wherever there's more leaves, we get more shadow. Now this is telling us not just about the, uh, the depth of the tree, the shape through the shadow, but by adding in all these leaves, it's also telling us about the shape of the leaves, the texture of the tree itself. You might notice that as I'm building this up, we're getting that busyness problem. Because this is so busy here, this tree is now adding to the busyness along with this church. So this is no longer a quick and light sketch. Instead, this sketch is sort of a, a really detailed piece of work. Obviously, not yet, but to make it feel balanced, that's what's going to have to happen. You're going to have to spend time on all of these elements to balance out the ink and the texture. So that's why if we just go back to what we were talking about before, suggestion, I advise just picking your focal point, your focal area to do these detailed textures. And then just as we move away from that, doing less and less. That said, naturalistic ha hatching, just to move back to what we're talking about, can also be applied to walls. So that's what this is really, these little shapes. I could have built up instead of this hatching. You could build up the texture through lots and lots of bricks and where it's lighter, you just do a couple of bricks. So naturalistic hatching really is taking the real texture, not applying it everywhere, but applying it more to darker areas. So you get higher value, like here, this is a higher value, darker area, through an increase in texture against a sort of texture which is still there, but implying light because it's much a lighter area like this. It's got a lower density of ink. Last but not least, we have our watercolour textures. And our watercolour textures are, again, used in a very similar manner. Now, often we are sketching ink and then watercolour. So I like to use my watercolours to support the textures that are on my page. An important idea behind that is to keep your washes a bit varied. So instead of like here, let's do a, an unvaried wash. We have this flat orange area, which is lovely, a really lovely gentle wash, but it's not implying texture. Instead, if we come up to this wall, what we could do with that same orange is we could apply it nice and dark in that shadow. But we could leave little gaps of white. We could also slightly vary it. So instead of just using that was quinacridone and sienna, I could pop in a little bit of another earthy tone, a bit of lunar earth. And that will imply some texture as well. So now we have this kind of broken up, varied initial wash. And that's all it is, it's the initial wash. We've got to remember in watercolours, things will always soften. And that initial wash does need to be nice and soft and gentle because we layer up to gain our texture, to gain our contrast and our value. So a lot of our texture is going to come after we let our page dry and apply another layer of colour. And just like magic, we have a dry page. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. So if I just take my brush again, I use the same colours, this time slightly drier, so less water. And instead of just, again, we could just wash over this again, couldn't we? Look, if we do that, you'll see the colour is just lightly enriching. But we have still not got any extra texture. No, instead of doing that, what we can do is, again, maybe we focus a bit in that shadow. But now we just pick out a few areas to enrich. So now we are implying extra texture in that same suggestion manner, just using our watercolours. Don't try and get your texture all at once, but remember to keep that texture from the start. So you're not going to get it all at the start, but try and get it starting from the beginning. Now, the other thing about watercolours is those natural, amazing properties. And we'll do more details of this as we move through the class. But just remember, watercolours can also be used wet on wet. And that just gives you a whole heap of different textures that you can play with. There are also different properties to watercolours, like granulation that I've mentioned before, which gives you a natural sandy texture to your colours, versus flat colours, which might give you a natural 
sort of reflective property to your colours, like a, a smooth sheet of glass, for example. So remembering, learning, discovering more about your watercolours and how they work is also a key part of discovering your textures. Last, but absolutely not least, of our watercolour techniques is the idea of introducing a bit of randomness. So there are granulating and flatter colours, but there are lots of ways, and we're going to cover lots of ways of introducing randomness or using wet on wet painting and things like that. But one of the key ones to think about is just applying splashes. So if I take a little bit of pigment, lots of water, and just tap my brush, or I tap my brush with another brush or pen, do you see how we're applying this sort of pointillism effect almost in quite a random way? Um, and that is a really great way of suggesting that random distribution, perhaps, of rocks, of grass, of flowers in a scene, which applies a lot of texture. We can do the opposite as well. So if I take a nice bold red colour here and give myself a patch of colour to work with, we can see this is a very flat wash. So I've come in, I've popped a flat wash down, which is exactly what I said maybe not to do. But look, if I then splash in some water, do you see how that pushes the colour away. So perhaps this is a way of suggesting light reflecting, puddles, rain, all those fun textures. Now if that was interesting don't forget to subscribe so you can catch the next parts of this series where we'll be creating some lovely textures and of course check out sketchloose.co.uk for more in-depth courses from myself. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again.